So this is showing you the geometry of the tetrahedron, uh, which here's a, a drawing of it. This is the frozen vibration that is one of the principal energy fields that moves through planets, as you can see in this diagram. Uh, it shows up at 19.5, which is Richard Hoagland's thing. He's speaking tonight uh, at 7. Um, so here's your uh, animation of the actual great red spot, which is at the limb of the tetrahedron down here and Jupiter. And this also extends through the great dark spot on Neptune. This extends through uh, a shield volcano on Mars called Olympus Mons, all throughout the solar system. So here's the secret. This is just a puddle of water that's got ordinary particles of sand in it called colloids. And those colloids are then vibrated on perfect sound frequencies like the white keys on the piano. And what you get is this interesting geometric shape inside, which should look pretty familiar to us by now. So uh, this is the same pile of sand in the same water, just with different sound frequencies. And this is a very important point we're going to get into soon. The fact is that you can crank up the sound to a different frequency, and you get the same stable geometry. It stays there. It doesn't move. And when you crank it back down, it goes back to the other shape. So these shapes remain consistent for the given volume of water that you have and the shape of that water regardless of how many times you change your frequencies. And it's also important to notice that the density of the structure, the density of the geometry gets higher as the pitch goes higher. These are increasing pitches as you go down. So what if physical matter was actually built like this? What if this is the secret of physical matter? Could that mean that atoms and molecules as we know them could fundamentally shift? That's what we're looking at. And as I was training you into seeing yesterday, is there a parallel reality where space and time flip over, where they invert with each other? And the answer is yes. That's actually what is going on. Uh, does this solve all the basic quantum physics problems? It does. And that's been proven. Goes back to the two slit experiment where you have single electrons that move through two slits, but then they form an interference pattern of more than two slits on the other side, which is like a wave. So here you have a particle, but over here you have a wave, and you can even have multiple strikes at the same time. So atoms and, and electrons are not little bitty chunks of matter. They're just energy. But they're not behaving the way they should. So Here's another diagram of that. This is what a wave does. You, a wave is just like if there was a liquid here, and then it hits this, it ripples like, like two waves on a pond coming together, and that's how you get your interference pattern. So, of course, wave-particle duality. Um, what we're discussing now is the idea that a particle is here in space-time. That's where it's uh, fixed in time but can move around in space. But in the inverted world, it can, it's spread out in time. So it's still the same thing. It's just that it's now flipped over into another domain. And in that other domain, it space, spaces out in time, and thus you get this kind of waveform that's created from it. Well, this would all be just kind of an interesting intellectual study until you start looking at larger objects. Now, check this out. This is a little thing called a buckyball or a fullerene. It's uh, carbon molecules, 60 of them put together. Obviously, this is a solid piece of matter. In fact, they're used to store items inside of them. They can be used for, like, uh, disaster cleanups, like oil spills eventually. If they could manufacture enough of them, that kind of thing would be great for that. Well, Zellinger in 1999 took these carbon-60 molecules and shot them at a 100 nanometer diffraction grating, which is a little slit like we showed you before, and he got an interference pattern, which is like a wave. 
So do you realize what that means? The buckyballs were rolling inside out somehow. They hit that wall and they turned over. Like, if, have you ever had one of those, uh, one of those little balloons where you squeeze it in your hand and it goes whoosh? Is everybody with me? That's what seems to be happening with physical matter, and I've heard that from black ops people as well. This is performed in Austria. So this little guy popped into all these waves when he hit the wall because he flipped inside out. Now, what's really interesting about the geometry that we're already showing you, like the geometry at the formation of the universe, is that they also can do this, but they do this in a very interesting way. When these geometries flip inside out, this is the opposite that they form. So when you have the dodecahedron, it forms the icosahedron. The tetrahedron flips into another tetrahedron upside down. And then the octahedron flips over into a cube, and it goes back and forth between those two. Now here's what's another very fascinating point. We've just seen how the fullerene can burst into a wave. Well, guess what? DNA is almost the same width. Now just chew on that for a second if you haven't already seen this talk. I mean, DNA is supposed to be a molecule. In fact, the amount of DNA in one cell of your body, if you spaced it out, is five feet long. It's five feet tall. So there's a lot of DNA in there. But if DNA can turn into a wave, then that opens the door to all these quantum non-locality principles. All of a sudden, that stuff becomes real. It becomes true. Well, we already have plenty of experimental evidence, and I'm just going to show you one of them right for now. This is Kaznachiev, a Russian scientist who passed uh, a diseased cell culture through a shield here, which when it was glass, there was no effect. Of course, the other culture was just healthy tissue. But then when he passed through quartz, the quartz allowed the disease to be transmitted to the healthy cells here. So you have disease to healthy. Well, a virus, again, is a little tiny thing. Most viruses are shaped like geometry. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, a virus can turn into a wave, OK? So there are some people who believe, for example, that AIDS is synthetic and that you can actually activate the dormant virus with a wave. Uh, it is important to remember that your consciousness has more power than any wave that could ever be beamed at you. So if you ever start worrying about electromagnetic mind control or all these silly things that people get focused on, that's something that you don't need to worry about. Also, uh, has, anybody, has anybody here done healing? Is anybody here? Okay, wow, that's more than half. Have you ever noticed how if you're with somebody and you're really empathizing with somebody who's sick, that you start feeling some of the same thing that they've got? There was a case where I had a woman, uh, they were doing a Reiki session on her, and I was in the room, and I started to have this outrageous pain in my big toe. It turns out that she had a gangrenous foot. And the exact spot on my toe that hurt was where the pain was the most strong for her. So this is real stuff. But the thing is, when you get these energetic beamings, unlike this helpless little cell culture, your consciousness has a huge effect on what's going to happen to you. And those little health problems, they don't last very long, right? I mean, usually, if you ever do healing work on somebody, just as a tip, go and wash your hands from the, from the uh, elbows down, because that will get rid of this transmitted energy. Okay, it's a very effective means of doing that. 